This is gospel music today, and it's a real pleasure for me to be here in Rhode Island with Ronnie Booth of the Booth Brothers. Ron, welcome to Rhode Island. Hi, thank you, Ken. It's, Glad to be here. Ron, I know you guys um, travel a lot during the mm -hmm. uh, during the year. We see the. We, we know you came here on that huge bus. Uh, we've seen the buses uh, with some of the other groups. Oh, yeah. What's it like to travel on that on the bus? Well, for years we we traveled in a van and trailer. And we operate right outside of Tampa, Florida. And uh, when you work in states like Rhode Island, which tonight was our first time in Rhode Island, and, and we were so glad to be here. We've done a lot of work in Canada and Michigan and whatnot. One of the things that you, you've got to be careful of is that you get proper rest and you're able to, uh, you know, and that was one thing that we were missing in the van and trailer. So, mm -hmm. so we invested in the, uh, in the, it's a 95 Eagle, Silver Eagle bus, 45 foot long. And, uh, and it has made travel so much better. It, it's, if, you, if you want privacy, you can go to your own bunk and you can close the bunk and sit up and I do a lot of reading or put headphones on, listen to music, talk on the phone, whatever you need to do. So you have your own little private corner of the world. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, uh, the front area is a, like a living room. We have our television and uh, we, we watch Fox News all the time. <laughs> We're constantly watching it. But, uh, and then, uh, then in the back, we have a back lounge area. And uh, it, it's a place that we can, when we're not uh, talking with people and sharing with people, it's, a, it's our home on wheels, if you will. And, and that, that's exactly what it is. It's a home. Yeah. So, uh, and it makes, it makes our time on the road, uh, again, the health factor is, is the primary issue. And we really, uh, we have a refrigerator and a freezer on there, and we try to keep some good lean meats and vegetables and whatnot on there so we're eating properly you know, while we're on the road. So uh, it, it comes in handy. Yeah. I know one of the drivers is someone close to you. Yeah, that's my own dad. <laughs> my own dad. That's great. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's a joy to have Daddy on the road with us. Uh, we mm. actually started in 1989, my brother and I, Michael and I, and with our dad. And we sang for nine years with Dad. We hired a gentleman by the name of Jim Brady, who Jim sang with his father and all and his wife in a group called the Schulers. And they were out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Well-respected group. Jack, Jim's father-in-law, had a mild heart attack and had to come off the road. So Jim and his wife were doing some, some duets, and, uh, and then they began a group with Paul Lancaster, who is now with the Martins. Mm -hmm. They had just started that group when Michael and I called, and, uh, and Jim came with us, and we asked him just to fill in for a little while, and we were auditioning men as Jim was filling in with us, and to be honest, Ken, the sound, it was just, it was just there. Mm -hmm. But you got to know behind the scenes, the man lives what he sings. And everywhere he goes, he represents the Booth Brothers too. And that's such a, that's so important today that, uh, that we live what we sing about. Mm. So, so uh, he did, uh, he joined us and he, he's been with us for almost a year and a half now and, and he's like a brother to us and we're God's blessing. Great, great. So it's, it's Ronnie Booth. Yes, sir. Jim Brady. And we have a third That's right, person. my brother Michael. <laughs> yeah. Michael Booth. and. Uh, uh, he's the one that might take, you know, an hour and a half to watch 60 Minutes every now and then. So <laughs> he's, you know, no, I'm just too, he has a ball with that. And, and he knows how to, how, to, how to utilize his humor on stage to really loosen the crowd. We want people to a degree, yes, we are entertainers. Christians need to be entertained just as much as any other human being out there. And, you know, we don't back up from that statement. But that's not our primary reason for doing what we do. We have a message that we believe in. It is Christ. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with Him. It's, it's no different than my relationship with my two boys. Uh, I'm their father. I'll do anything in the world for them that I have to do, especially if it's good, if it's good for them and it won't hurt them. Man, I want to bless them. God wants to do the same thing in our lives. He really does. And I think people have the wrong perception of the Lord. He gets a bad rap. You know, a lot of times he really does. Even in the church, he gets, he gets a bad rap. No, he's your father. Just talk to him and have a relationship. Just trust mm. him and, and read his word. That, that Bible is not there to beat you over the head with. That Bible is his love letter to you. You know, you think about it, Ken. We don't have to wonder how it all began. We don't, we don't have to wonder what happened. Uh, we, can, we can know all these things. We can know how to handle what's going on today, and we can, we can be assured we'll know what's happening tomorrow. He's been good to us. Yeah. And that's the mes message that the Booth Brothers are about in proclaiming that. Yeah. If we can't be happy about 
being Christians, oh, we were no. missing part of the no. uh, deal, huh? Absolutely. God yeah. said we can have joy unspeakable and full of glory and peace that passes all understanding. The world, uh, the people who don't have a relationship with the Lord don't cannot fully understand that. They really can't. And uh, but we can when we have a relationship with Him, and that is through trusting in what His Son Christ did for us on the cross. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the all-time great gospel songwriters, <laughs> Mosey uh, Lister. Mosey Lister, yeah. Now you guys have a, a unique relationship with Mosey Lister. We how, sure how do. Did that happen? Well, years ago, back in the late '60s, my dad joined a group out of Tampa, Florida. Believe it or not, it was a gospel group called the Rebels Quartet. <laughs> so, <laughs> proper name for a gospel group, you know. But they, at the time, they were they were a very respected group. Uh, the Dixie Lily Company down there in Tampa, Florida, originally known as the Dixie Lily Rebels. So they used to put them on television down there. Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, they dropped the name Dixie Lily and just called themselves the Rebels. And they had a television show that ran from Miami all the way to Detroit um, back in the late 60s, early 70s, well known. And at that time, Mosey was doing some arranging for the Rebels Quartet as Prior to that, he was arranging for Hobie Liston, the Statesman Quartet, mm -hmm. the Blackwood Brothers, um, just some really classic right. sounds back then in the 50s. And Mosey became known then. Well, Mosey lived in Tampa for years with his wife, Wileen, two daughters. And uh, he was really one of the first ones that began making his living as a, as a songwriter in gospel music. It was Mosey Lister, and he influenced a young man by the name of Bill Gaither. And uh, we, know, we know where that went, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, we had the joy of knowing Mosey through our dad's association with him and the Rebels Quartet. Back in 89, Mosey and his wife came to see us uh, for the first time. And he, he heard our sound, he liked what he heard, and he made some suggestions, and he also brought some of his own music and said, guys, he said, try this. And we began to develop a relationship through that. And uh, as we have grown, Mosey in the, last, in the last 25 to 30 years primarily has been working for uh, writing choral arrangements for churches and ensembles and ladies trios and just all kinds of things. Not so much focusing on Southern Gospel. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of brought him back into, the, into that and uh, he needs to be back and you know people uh, are, you know, some of them didn't know if he was still alive or not. And, uh, and the man is 82 years old and he is writing the most current music that you've ever heard. Mm -hmm. uh, our song Still Feeling Fine uh, was written by Mosey two mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, 50 years after he wrote the the uh, classic Feeling Mighty Fine. So uh, Mosey, Mosey made a comment just a few short weeks ago. We were with him and he said, he said, I am reinventing myself. He's 82 years old and he's, he's, he's gone to, uh, he's, he, loves, he loves listening to all kinds of music because he, he wants to grow, continually grow. And um, he's got some uh, songs he's given us uh, here recently that you guys haven't heard. And uh, we're privileged to have such a close fit with Mosey, and, and there's something about the chemistry of our sound and Mosey songs. It just gels together mm -hmm. and it works. It's the Lord. It's all the Lord. Thank Ronnie, you. thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you in Rhode Island and a oh, pleasure man. to have you on Gospel Music today. So, Kim, thank, thank you. you, and God bless you folks here. Thank and you. keep supporting these guys. They're doing a great work. And let's go back to more great Southern Gospel music on Gospel Music Today.